Gene Mod Hod Mode, a really cool seven day to die mod pack from Hydra. And it's awesome. It's really at the center of it. The Horde Mode component is a wave defense mod, tower wave defense mod like you've never seen in 7 Days to Die. It's super unique and it's super fun and I've been playing that for multiple alphas and I'm going to show you this time how to install it through the mod launcher and some tips for getting started because there's it's, it can be kind of difficult to get started in because there's a lot of different changes in GNA mod by itself but also because it's wave defense. So I'm going to give you some tips of how to get started as well but let's start with how to actually get it installed. And the first thing you need to do, you need to get the mod launcher. I'm going to leave a link in the description today uh, of the video. So go have a look at that one and download the 7 Days to Die mod launcher because it's needed for installing GNA mod. Uh, the easiest way at least, you can do it manually, but this is really the super simple way. And by the way, if you haven't liked this video, make sure you like the video and maybe subscribe to the channel and all of that as well. But uh, we're going to go down here to the latest stable. We're going to use the stable. You can use the latest and everything, but it, you know, there are changes to it. So we're not going to do that. And we're going to do copy from an existing copy of the game because that's usually the easiest way of doing it. So make sure you install seven days uh, to die in Steam as normally. You can download it from Steam if you want to, but then you have to put in your username and password and stuff like that. So we're not gonna do that. So we're gonna do copy from uh, existing copy. It's gonna tell you where it's gonna end up with, and it's gonna be installed here. We're gonna do install game copy, and it's gonna take a while because it has to download everything uh, and copy it over from your other seven days to die install. And the first part is done now. We're not ready. And it's important that you follow these steps because if you miss them out, you end up having problems. So now we've actually copied things over. We haven't actually installed all of the mod. So we look at this, some of the options here. We can refresh mods automatically. Not recommended. Don't do that because then if there's a new update, uh, your version will update as well automatically. That can cause problems with your saves. ESE, normally you don't need to do that because, well, some mods break it. So don't update registry. It's fine. It just makes it a little bit easier for the server port and everything everything like that. Uh, I'm going to take it off uh, for now. It might interfere with your regular installs as well of 7 Days to Die because you're using the same entries. A uh, direct download, you can do that as well. Save all games local to mod is really useful. It means that it's going to be in a specific folder structure nearby where the mod is installed as opposed to where your, your regular vanilla installs are. And now we're going to do pre-sync mod and you're going to see it's the mod has not been downloaded yet because again we just copy things over from the vanilla and yes we want to download it now and you'll see here at the, this window it's actually going to start uh, it says it's cloning it you see it's downloaded files here 579 out of 1690 and of course how much well how big these files are total and it's going to take a while depending on the size and your quality of your internet connection and finally, the download has been done and now it's copying and fixing things locally. And it says copying done. Good. We're not done though. We're not done. So what we've done now is we've installed DNA mod core. Now there's been some changes from previous version where there's actually core, but then there are small modlets. So let's check here the modlets. If we check here, the models will tell us that we have the core and the core UI put in. We don't, however, have the horde mode. And that's the one we're going to be playing today. So we're going to click here and enable it. Another thing that I like to do myself is I like to do the classic tool belt because I find the the tool belt that is in the, the the gna mod itself is a little bit inconvenient because it's sort of on the right side of the screen as opposed to where well at the bottom where it normally is so we're going to do that and done so we're now we have these ones installed enabled and we're good now we can finally do play mod and it starts up the usual fun pimps because the base game is loading pre-caching the files and we'll see here and now it's loading in you'll see soon a difference where the mod pack has been loaded and you see obviously the changes for the front end you see GA mod DNA mod hall mode here so what we're going to do now is going to see options make sure i have uh, in my video quality all this doesn't really matter we have a player profile i have my vid very good and now we're going to do a new game so we're going to do a test dna and uh, don't choose Naviscan. What you want to do is go to hold mode, the specific hold mode maps that they have. Um, and it has specific configs and everything. You do normal, expert, or hard, or extreme. 
and I'm just going to do normal because that's difficult enough uh, as it is. Depending on how many players you're going to invite, friends and everything, you can change that as well. A lot of other stuff I put as basic because, it, it, you know, you can you can make it more difficult if you want to, but it's already fairly difficult, I have to say. You can change, for instance, blood. I don't know if... I, a lot of these things actually doesn't matter as far as the blood moon count because the hordes that are coming are considered screamer hordes. So you don't necessarily need to worry about how many blood moon enemy count is because it's all scream or hordes and everything so we're just gonna make sure we start, we start to the horde mode one and we're gonna do a start and we're now loading in you'll see it's an entirely different thing here and it says welcome to jna mod hold mode uh blah 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 and it talks about you say you find some cash in the pockets you use this on the vending machines i'll show you how to do that thank you adra and uh, continue and that's it so this is really the map. I mean, you can run out and do whatever you want to, but don't do that. That's not what it's in in intended for. You see what you have here. We see you have a lot of ca cash. It looks like a lot of cash, 100,000. You also have um, a first aid kit. And the interesting thing you can see, it actually has a use bar. So you can use it multiple times. So if I do like this, you'll see it degrades a little bit. So you can use it more than one time, which is really useful. Same thing with the rations. If you want to eat that one you have multiple so initially you don't have to worry about that we also have a pistol here modify let's put in the the weapon flashlight you see the ui has been changed it's been changed around let's put that one down like here see this is the tool belt here and uh, so we have now our little pistol that's not enough so this is the beacon this is what the whole aim of the game is is to protect the beacon a big beacon has some interesting things on the side there's some supply cache here you can buy things and in between you have be beacon storage so there's beacon storage beacon storage on all these four sides so you want to go and grab whatever you see here because there are some things that are going to be really important like the ammo and everything for instance really good maybe some tools not that you need a lot of tools uh, but ammo is really important and you know i wouldn't worry about the arrows and stuff like that blueprints these are really important i will tell you why in just a moment let's see if there's anything else that we can grab here chainsaw maybe for close combat other than that some of these things uh mortar mix stuff like that you're going to be using that later on for for building things uh, bolts and everything impact driver i think you can only use that one to tear things down so that might be useful later on Let's see here, wood spikes, stuff like that works just like it normally does. Be a little bit careful when you place things out. Don't rush placing out things like that. You want to place out other blocks first and let's have a look. Oh, actually we saw something really good. We saw a forge, good to have because you're going to need one of those ones. And I think I got all that. Okay, so now we have a bunch of things. And now you also have to see on the side, you see this at the top, you have supplies cache, which has basically food, ammo, general supplies. There's some things you want to definitely purchase, and I'll show you that in a little bit. You have material catch, which is things that you want to build with, electricity and things like that. And then you have an outfit catch, which has... Oh, this one is really good. So we're going to buy ourselves an AK-47 that is really high quality, because that definitely is going to help. Uh, what else here? You could do, for instance, some helmets and things like that. Might be useful. Make sure you go on, down and check the secret stash because you'll definitely find a lot more. Let's buy this one. Let's buy this one as well. I don't normally use a lot of close combat because you don't normally have enough time to do that. So I, I wouldn't really worry about that itself. I, make sure you just get some uh, some different armor and everything. And, um, and these ones exist on all sides. So there's four of them effectively. So go and check all of them, really important. So there's a few things that you wanna make sure you do initially. One, you want to make sure you have a bunch of blueprints like this. Blueprints are a little bit interesting. Blueprints are the way to build. And you'll left click on it, do recipes, and you'll see brick blocks, granite, steel block, stainless steel. So we're going to see if we can find some resources uh, here, material. Let's do some flax stone here. Buy a bunch of these ones. If you're lucky, you'll find full blocks as well let's say flagstone i could buy all these ones as well otherwise iron scraps and bolts are pretty good as well buy these ones and what happens is that if the full blocks you can place down as you want to don't place it too close because you need a little bit of space to play around with i like to do maybe two away or three away or something like that because you need to make sure you're building up your walls normally you start early on but you have the first horde coming in at around 12 one or something and by then you want to make sure that you have at least 
a wall that is maybe too thick and three or four high as well preferably four because otherwise they will just run in and they will destroy the beacon they will be seeking towards you and the beacon and that's going to be a really bad time if you haven't actually enclosed it because they will take it down and well we'll see at the end i'll see if i let them take it down you'll see what happens so this is how you build with just with a full block so you can do that that's not normally buying the full box can be really expensive so instead we're going to do recipes here and we're going to do Let's see, scrap metal. I think these ones, if you look at it, let's say iron scrap plus bolts, which is what we have, can be used to upgrade scrap metal block blueprint. Requires a hammer or nail gun. Do I have any hammer or nail gun? Ah, claw hammer. Let's buy one of these as well. If you can find the nail gun, even better. But anyway, so, um, oh, no, AK-47, I want to put there. Oh, make sure you put down your bedroll. Really good. Put, put it down somewhere. Not necessarily on the ground. If you can get it up a little bit, it's even better. Uh, but let's do this on recipes. Scrap metal blocks. Now, let's do 50 of these ones. And let's do make. You'll see you'll craft a bunch of scrap metal blueprints. And let's put this out here. Let's do one, two, three. So if I put it down like this, it's like a normal block, like a frame. However they have no collision you can basically walk straight through them which means that you can't stand on them either because they're just blueprints which is actually kind of cool i do have some problems with let's say i want to put it on top because i'm on the side now i can't put it here i have to like go close and everything to make sure my character is close enough so it's a little bit inconvenient but then you take your hammer or a nail gun and you basically just upgrade and if you have a nail gun, this is a lot faster. And you see this one now has 49 hit points. This one has 1,000. Now, the different hardness and everything, but the better, the higher, the better. You can upgrade it once, and you'll see it has 2,800. So I can do that for all of these ones. Again, nail gun is a lot faster. So what I would suggest is try to get one layer at least of these ones. If you do this the wrong way, meaning you, let's say if I put one like that, and upgrade this one, what happens? It's going to fall down through here because this one is it's basically just to outline the blueprint of the block itself so you want to make sure you get the walls up of the different materials i would suggest at least getting some metal because they have better than these ones the flagstone uh, and that really does help uh, and make sure you get your basic wall up as well i now have three high two thick and i bought a, a bunch of uh, granite not these one this one, granite blocks as well, which are pretty good. They have 2,000 hit points and everything. This is, I would call, the basics of what you need. You're definitely going to need a lot more. But after this, you can, for instance, you don't make them too thick. The problem if you make them too thick, let's say I make this five thick and three or four high. Problem is that once they start then uh, tunneling and you can't actually attack them. So make sure you have some air gaps in between. I like to do maybe two uh, wide air gaps because that allows you to put in more spikes, for instance. Ouch, that's painful. Make sure if you do that, though, that you have a way in, which I didn't do here. But I can do something like this. Just allow myself to get in. Let's do this. Like this. And now it's a little bit too close. Actually, I wanted to have too wide. But anyway, it is what it is because I'm just showing off. Uh, putting spikes around can really help. They're not going to save you more than a little bit but it can help you a little bit when you're getting too many zombies on one side at least they'll sort of pull themselves around here and there's some of them will die so if you have spikes just make sure you place place them out that's one of the things you want to do now this is not going to keep us alive not by a long shot so another thing you want to keep in mind is that as you go and look through all these um these different drawers you know there's going to be a lot of ammunition different type of ammunition i found magnum ammo i found nine nine millimeter i found some 762 etc so what i also went ahead and did i actually went to buy some different weapons so i have my nine millimeter that i found initially this one i also have a desert vulture i have my ak-47 just in case something really happens oh shit moments and i got a shotgun so make sure you get a bunch of different weapons because you are going to need it you're going to need a bunch of ammunition that's another thing that you want to be careful about now ammunition can be gotten in two ways one you can buy the ammunition let's say i want to buy these 63 shotgun shells 1500 you might be thinking hey, i got a lot of money but it's going to go really quickly so you do want to buy some but you do want to be a little bit careful let's say i buy these 255 4000 really expensive another thing that you want to do instead and i was lucky that i had a work table in one of my storage work tables are really good so we're going to put down the work table because 
I'm gonna put it like this. You might want to make sure you're actually protecting it from vomit and everything. So something like this might be good. And it allows you to do, let's say I want to do my Magnum ammo. Oh, if I just had bullets, propellant and gunpowder, I might be able to make them, which is really important as well. So that's a much cheaper way of getting your ammunition, but it takes a while. So let's say every time you go and check and this, these storages are being refreshed every day. So make sure you go and check out the things that I always buy, always buy all the gunpowder. I make sure I buy the, the bullets. You see it's 19, 430 of this one, which is a steel. Paper is really good as well for the shotgun shells. Let's buy all these ones as well. And make sure you check both the regular one and the special one that, oh sorry, this one, the secret stash, because they might have different things. Let's see here, we have some casings. And make sure you buy some repair kits because you need those to repair your weapon because they will be degrading. And check all of them. Let's say here, here's a lot of propellant, a lot of gunpowder. Propellant is basically gunpowder. Buy all that you can. Make sure you buy all of it. Don't leave it because you will have enough money and just extra that you have, just put that in. You have too many. But that gives us a bunch of it. And now let's see, we can make a bunch of, let's say 762. Look here, 156, and it's going to take half an hour, which is why it's important to get started early on. But this basically cost us you know, 300, 400 or something in order to get 156 of this one, as opposed to maybe two or 3,000 if you're buying them. So it's a lot cheaper, but a lot slower. So make sure you get a work table, get two, get three, because you're going to need it. So if you find any, get them. Another thing you want to actually probably fairly quickly do, make, if you find an engine, buy an engine. If you find this, or well, gas cannons are pretty easy to get. You also want to make sure you get the, oh, here's another work table. Buy it. Definitely buy it. You want to get, for instance, the, let's see if I can find that here. Oh, now my game froze a little bit, which usually means that something is happening, which is usually bad stuff. Uh, we can buy, let's see if we can find a generator bank as well. No generator bank. You can buy some food and everything. Molotovs are good. Pipe bombs are really good as well. Pipe bombs are made in the... Are they coming? Maybe not yet. Good. Pipe bombs are my favorite. Pipe bombs really going to keep you alive. Pipe. P. Oh, that's wrong. Sorry. P here. Pipe. Bomb. You need demolition expert and stuff like that, which means that you need to go and... Demolition expert. I always buy the first one because that gives you the pipe bombs. So let's do the pipe bomb here. We don't have enough of the, the bolts and iron uh, iron pipe, but we can buy this. So make sure you buy all these uh, resources as well. You see, I only have six of this one. Get started on the production really quickly and get a second one. We have a second one here because that really helps you speed up all your production. And again, to make sure that you craft even more, let's get a bunch of the only two. Well, let's make that. We need a lot more. I need to buy a lot more stuff. And you don't have a lot of time. So you want to make sure you are a little bit quick on it. I like to make the scrap blocks because they're reasonably easy to get. You see, you buy these ones and make sure you have enough of the blueprints, for instance. And you can put down a bunch of these ones. Buy all the propellant. Here you go. Buy the propellant. Some painkillers might be useful, but you have the reusable first aid kit, which is probably more useful. This one, buckshot. There we go. Let's see what else. Does that allow me to make my shotgun shell? Yes, I can make my shotgun shells and a bunch of them. You see, it's going to take some time. Get started on them early. Don't wait too long because you need a lot more. Why am I injured? Oh, of course, because of obviously the I was stepping on some spikes. Yeah, that's bad. So now I got this basic stuff done. I mean, I have a little bit of time and uh, they will be attacking very soon. So we're going to start with a second layer here. We're only going to make it too high. Simply because uh, they're, they're probably going to make a hole at one space and then they're going to go through. But it's going to take them a little bit of extra time to actually go through or go around. So we're just going to make here a second layer of it. Because basically, you need to make sure you have a layer defense because they will be breaking through. Let's see here, two, and then we can do here. Usually at around 12 or 1, you'll see the first daytime wave. And then at uh, mid, uh, sorry, 10 p.m., you'll start seeing the night torts. And those ones are really tough. You need to make sure you have things done by then. Otherwise, you end up with a lot of problems. So we're going to do like this. Put it up a little bit like a wizard's wall kind of thing because they're going to come up here. Sometimes some of them are going to break through, obviously. Let's do, oh, damn it. One, two, in. Let's do that. So I'm going to just go around and make another layer here. Here we go. Now we have a second layer. We still have some time. So I'm going to see if I start building a third layer here as well. Again, 
uh, make it three high it just makes them less likely to stack up on each other and jump over because otherwise they'll be really easy to win. You probably want to make sure you have it four or five eventually um, because that really does help you when you start getting waves of them because they will otherwise climb up on top of the, each other and then jump into your base which is something you definitely don't want to have them doing and to avoid that you need to have higher walls. Also, make sure that you give yourself a way up if you fall down here at the bottom. So I'm going to do this. Give myself a way up on the outside, not on the inside. Don't give it on the inside because then the zombie is going to be using it. You might be wondering, how do you do the other blocks? Well, it's just like the scrap metal blocks, you do recipes and then you select, like, if you have a lot of steel stuff, you can do that, iron stuff, flagstone blocks. You basically choose whatever you have and it will tell you, let's say the brick block, uh, it will tell you then, let's make, uh, let's make one. They'll tell you that you need to have brick and mortar. It requires brick plus mortar itself, which is basically type. And here's the iron scrap plus bolts, which is what I was just using. See, I can buy 338 brick blocks, but they cost 10,000. I'm going to do it just for... It's good to have a bunch of really good blocks actually in your inventory. Because it means that if there's a breach, you can actually quickly just put them down uh, so that they don't... Oh, and I think that... Oh yeah, the first wave is coming in. So there's going to be a sort of a daytime horde, which normally you see around, I think, 2 p.m. or 1 p.m. or something. And they're probably all going to end up here. Yep, because if you remember, I left this one open, which is okay. And I can then just shoot them here, which is a pretty good place. You might want to make sure you are blocking off so they don't jump over, for instance, like that. He hit the, the spike there. Now, a lot of them might go around here, but some might not. You have to be a little bit careful about that. I'm gonna at least stand here. I have a weird spider thingy here. I'm gonna shoot him, and this is why you need to have a lot of ammo and a lot of weapons, because you'll be getting these ones even during the daytime. But let's see here, we have a bunch more ammo being made here. Make sure you always keep making ammo. And as I was saying, as soon as you can, find engine, find a generator bank. I don't have any here. Make sure you buy all this as well. Because you want to get into electricity as soon as you can. Because that really saves you later on. Uh, because you can start putting your traps. For instance, blade traps are really useful. Uh, dart traps can be useful if you have a proper way of funneling them in. I didn't build that here. I don't have a generator bank anyway. You dead? Oh, she is dead. Okay. So there are some, some of them out here. It's not really too bad. It's sort of like a light horde, as you notice. But it can be enough to sort of distract you from building. While well, we can bring them in. Oh, she's fighting the pig. Interesting. I have that in one of my episodes where a pig was killing the zombies, which is really cute. Until I, unfortunately, I killed the, the pig as well. But that's a different thing. The pig actually might end up killing the zombie if I don't do anything because it will attack her. Like that. No, 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 she is. Uh, thank you, piggy. So you have to continually make sure you're doing something. If you're just sitting back, you are going to end up being overwhelmed. And that's not really fun. Because you might be thinking, that, hey, I got this. I got this. No problem. And uh, so let's say we're, we're here. Let, uh, let's say it's now going to be nighttime and I haven't done anything else. And nighttime comes in. You saw the actually, you saw immediately, you saw them coming in. And you will be seeing them coming in here as well from all over. It's not just going to be a few, but there are going to be a lot of them and they're going to be running and they will be causing you a lot of headache actually. So this is why you really need to make sure that you are ready, which is not so easy the first time you're playing it. But make sure if you follow my... Oh, what happened there? Oh, the vulture was vomiting here. Let's see if I can take care of the... Is that going to cause a lot of problems actually? Oh, you see, they're already in here. Oh no, and having uh, some of these, see the bloody vulture, I hate you, I hate you, I hate you, die I say, and now it's going to come in for me, no, 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 oh, whew. look at all these ones, and already, no, that was this one, there are already tons of them in there, I got some pipe bombs, and now they see they're going up on top of each other, oh, and that's going to cause, Problems because it means they're going to be running in here. Oh no, 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 no. Okay, good thing I got it. Oh, don't. No, no. Oh, and there I died. See how easy it is? You think you're good because you have a 
couple of uh, walls around and see they're actually attacking my beacon here which is the problem and which is why you really need to be ready for it what i built was nowhere near enough now let's see if i can go and get my stuff um there's my backpack oh no my backpack is actually outside here oh crap okay can i come in here okay come on let me run it oh, no, run jump jump i say oh and i'm gonna get killed as well heal oh no <laughs> Yeah, that wasn't quite the uh, plan. That that jump without stamina didn't work very well. <laughs> Unfortunately, how embarrassing. Alright, come on. Respawn. Go on my bed. You see, now they are... Hey, we're going to do this. So this is how bad it gets. I'm going to go into god mode here. And I'm gonna, we're going to let them attack, attack this uh, beacon. And so you can see actually what happens when they ha attack it enough sufficiently. If you look here, there's a lot more than eight concurrent zombies. Uh, I think there is. I think I might be maxing it out. I have like 10 or something out here and then another bunch here. Now they do take damage when they're attacking it, which is nice because it means that they do uh, slowly die themselves, but they will be eventually be breaking things down. You can repair it if you have the resource switch, which actually is really helpful because, well, if they break it down, oh, you have a bad time. I cost some money for me to repair it if I repair that one you'll notice here at the bottom it will be taking a little bit of time before it tells you how much it actually cost and this was five dollars so what happens when everything gets blown up well let me let me try to expedite this here let me break it down let me shoot it with my digger let's take out this one as well and this is what happens the whole thing goes off you have a nuclear explosion here I'm in god mode fortunately and <laughs> Yes, this is what happens. Now, of course, I did this manually because I shot it just to not spend so much time just watching them. But this is what happens when they destroy the beacon. You have an explosion in the middle and uh, yeah, everything is taken out. And that's the end of your wave defense game. So make sure you defend that beacon if you want to avoid having this uh, this thing happen because this is how oh, this is. This is quite the explosion, but that's really what the game is all about. You start up, go in, grab your gear, buy weapons, buy ammunition, buy resources, buy blocks, build up your base, and then defend it during the daytime, during the nighttime. Morning comes around, you can buy more stuff, and the day restarts and you just keep on going because it gets more and more difficult. And if you fail, everything blows up and that's the end of the game. Game over. Hope you enjoyed this. I really enjoy this type of game. It's really fun with friends as well. So grab a friend or two and just enjoy yourself. Another thing that I didn't mention specifically is that it does tell you how long there is until next wave. Let's say I do a kill all. So now there are no zombies and in another 55 seconds another wave of zombies will be coming in. So you can sort of time it if you kill all the ones in the wave how long you have until the next wave hits and it will hit until you end up having the morning while well, dawn breaks and then uh, they stop spawning until the afternoon horde or the nighttime horde. Go ahead. Have fun. I'll see you next time. And let me know in the comment section of what you think about this mod. And make sure, of course, you've liked this video and uh, subscribe to my channel. See you next time. Special thanks to the great patrons supporting the channel. If you would like to join the vetted community and support these videos, do follow the Patreon link.